Hello everyone, my name is Thomas de Brice Alazar. I'm a postdoc at the Royal Holloway University and I'm going to present to you a joint work with André Chailly from INRIA Paris. We propose a tight security reduction for signatures based on average trapdoor pre-match sampleable functions. As I'm going to explain, this concept is a relaxation of trapdoor pre-match sampleable functions which were introduced by Gentry, Baker, and Vaikun Tanatan to make secure hash and sign signature scheme. Let us start with the concept of security reduction. Our goal is to prove that a cryptographic scheme is secure. For this, we first need a problem P that we believe to be hard. The security reduction consists in giving a proof that breaking the scheme in time t implies breaking the problem P in time t times c of t for some function c. In this case, we say that we made a security reduction of the scheme to the problem P with the c of t lost. As a consequence, if there are no algorithms to solve the problem P in times less than t, then there are no algorithms to break the scheme in time less, t, less than t divided by c of t. In order to realize the security as close as possible to p, what we wish is a tight security reduction. Roughly speaking, it means that breaking the scheme in time t implies that breaking the problem p in time approximately t. This kind of proof of assessing the exact security and hence the efficiency of a cryptographic scheme. To have a security reduction, we often, we often need an idealized model called the random oracle model, that I will call ROM in what follows. It is the first step and it is used mostly for signatures. The ROM is used when the cryptographic scheme needs a public function that behaves like random. For instance, when it is used a hash function like in the schemes as full domain hash signature scheme, FDH scheme. In the ROM, when proving the security, we model the hash function as a perfect random function, for which every party have an access via a black box model. This model is idealized, but thanks to it, we have tighter and simpler proof. There is an extension of this model, which is called the, random, the quantum random oracle model. Suppose that an adversary has access to a quantum computer. It gives to him an additional power. From any function that is a classical circuit, he can efficiently run the quantum unitary here OC, associated to the circuit, o, circuit C. In other words, the adversary can make superposition computation. The running time of OC is roughly equal to the computing time of C. In the quantum oracle model, we take into account, account this additional power. Any adversary has access to the hash function h and thus to the quantum unitary OH associated to it. This is natural in a world where quantum computer exists. It gives to adversaries the possibility to run the Grover's algorithm or to find collision faster than the classical case. In our work, we were interested in the security reduction in models like the ROM and the QROM for full domain hash signature schemes. I recall here how these schemes work. There are two ingredients. First, a hash function h that will be modeled model as a random function. Secondly, we have a trapdoor one-way function f. The signer knows the secret key. Here, the secret key permits to him to invert the function. Then, to sign a message, the signer computes the invert for the function of the h of the message. For signatures, the classical adversarial model is existential unforgeability under chosen message attack, the so-called FCMA CMA model, or curve CMA model if the attacker has a quantum computer. You have the signer who owns the secret key which enables him to invert the trapdoor one-way function, and the attacker who owns the public key, namely the one-way function. Furthermore, there is a hash function which is modeled as a random function. This would, in the, this would be in the QROM or the QROM. No, now, in this model, the attacker can make signature queries of each choice. He can ask to the signer to sign any message. It is important in this model. But in this case, 
requests or classical, if, even if the attacker has a quantum access. But a quantum attacker cannot ask for signatures in superpositions. Otherwise, the attacker has access to the hash function, and if he is quantum, he can compute these functions in superposition. Then, the attacker goal is to produce a valid signature of a message that was not signed by the signer. The function that is used to sign is a trapdoor one-way function. <coughs> Therefore, with only the knowledge of the public key, the attacker cannot invert the function and thus forging the signatures. However, in the FCMA or QFCMA model, the attacker has access to signatures of its choice. So signatures could leak information on the secret key that is used to invert the function. In this context, Chantry, Paikan and Vaikunathan propose to add property to the one-way function to ensure the security. They introduced the concept of trapdoor pre match shamplable function. I will call this function TPSF SF, in what follows. Mostly speaking, the definition is as follows. Let D be a distribution over inputs of the one-way function F. We need two properties. The first one asks that for all inputs Y here, the distribution of the algorithm which inverts the function on Y is close to the one of X picked according to the distribution D but conditioning on the event f of x is equal to y. It means that the algorithm which inverts the function with the trapdoor is distributed independently of the secret key, and thus reveal nothing on it. The second property asks for the image of the function to be uniformly distributed when inputs are distributed according to d. Roughly speaking, it means that, it means that points of the function range at the same number of inverts. With this definition at hand, Gentry, Paikart and Vaikunathan propose the one-way function based on the lattice base, based on the lattice problem in homogeneous short integer solution ISIS. They show how to reach the properties of TPSF. Thanks to that they gave a tight security reduction to the problem of collision. In other words, they showed that the collision problem is easier than, than, than forging the signatures, which is, each, it's, which is itself easier than solving ISIS. From the above diagram, we can see that the GPV construction gives for lattices a tight and optimal reduction to the hardness of inversion, the one-way hypothesis here. This is because the problem, this problem is essentially as hard as finding a collision. Size cis for these parameters for the proposed parameters is approximately as hard as, as ISIS. But this result raises two questions. First, is the tight security reduction is necessarily to the collision problem? Secondly, the properties of pre image sampleable functions are hard to meet. Can we relax them and still having a tight security reduction? In this work, we made four things to answer to this question. First, we propose a relaxation of properties which are required to have a TPSF. We propose the definition of average TPSF. Secondly, we show how to build signatures with this function and we give a tight security reduction for them to the close with random function problem, which is harder than the collision problem. We extend this result to the QRAM problem. Finally, we apply these results to the recent wave code based signature schemes. In this case, our results are crucial. Indeed, the collision problem for wave parameters is easy. Let us start with the definition of average trapdoor pre image sampleable function. But let us start by giving a more pre precise definition of what the TPS TPSF is. Let f be a function that we suppose to be a trapdoor one-way. Let d be a distribution over the range, the range of the function. Here, the notation delta means the statistical distance. We need this notion here of distance from the fact that if two distributions are close for this distance, then they are computationally indistinguishable. 
For f to be a TPSF, we need two properties with here epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, which are a small and negligible function. First, the output of the algorithm, which inverts f, is statistically close to the distribution d. This is given more precisely <coughs> in the point 1 of the slide. We see that for all inputs, the algorithm which inverts f is epsilon 1 close to the random variable here, es, in red. In the point 2, we see that outputs of f are statistically close to the uniform distribution when here the input e is picked according to t. The important point here is the fact that the first property, here the point 1, is required for all fixed inputs. In our case, we relax these two properties into only one. We define the epsilon average trapdoor pre-match sampleable function as follows. I will call them in what follows average TPSF. It corresponds to functions which are which are one which are trapdoor one way, such that the algorithm which inverts the function is statistically close to the random variable e, where e is picked according to d. But for inputs which are now random variables, here the random variables in red as unif. Inputs to f are not fixed anymore, they are uniformly distributed. Roughly speaking, we ask to the function f to verify the point 1 of TPSF, but on average over inputs, not for all fixed inputs. Therefore, any TPSF is an average TPSF. The opposite is roughly speaking true, but with a loss, a square loss. Indeed, any epsilon average TPSF, as we showed, is an epsilon 1, epsilon 2 TPSF with epsilon 2, which is equal to epsilon, but epsilon 1, which is equal to the square of epsilon. This last property follows from the leftover hash lemma. There is a loss of a square with the definition of average TPSF. Therefore, we lose the tight security reduction of Gentry, Baykert, and Vaikunan. Today, we know an, an instantiation of TPSF with the lattice-based signature scheme Falcon. But we know too, we know too an average TPSF wave. It is important here to note that wave is a code-based signature which is an average TPSF, but not directly a TPSF. With average trapdoor pre match sampleable functions, we make a tight security reduction to the claw with random function problem. So what is it? The problem is defined as follows. You are given an instance, uh, you are given as instance, a function f and a random function h. Your goal is to find a claw between these functions, namely x and y such that f of x is equal to h of y. Suppose that the function f given in this problem is an average TPSF. Then, if we can solve the problem in time t with q, with q queries to the random function h, then we can invert f in time q times t. This, give, this gives a non tight reduction to the problem of inverting f. I would like to stress here that the claw with random function problem can be seen as trying to invert f with multiple targets which are given by the outputs of the function h. I can now present to you a sketch, a sketch for security reduction. For security reduction to work, it is important to modify a little bit the signature scheme. When the signer wants to sign a message, he first pick a random salt or here in red on the slide. Then he, inv he inverts the one-way function on the edge of the message concatenated with the salt. Intuit intuitively, it gives as input to the algorithm which inverts f a uniformly distributed input. It es essentially explains why we relax properties of TPSF into average TPSF. Now, to make our security reduction, we modify the hash function as follows. We first create a random list L1 at the bottom of the slide 
of souls, uh, uh, of souls R, which and such that the list L1 has a size, a size large enough. When there is a call to the hash function, we distinguish two cases. If the salt is in the list L1, we return f of e sim, where e sim is in blue here, and it is a random variable which is picked according to the distribution d. Otherwise, we return a random val uh, value. But we keep in memory the value e sim. Here we are in the run, where h, h, the hash function, was modeled as a random function. So there are no differences with previously, as outputs of the function f are uniformly distributed. Furthermore, we can remark here that outputs E of the algorithm which inverts F on the left of the slide are distributed according to D by definition of ATPSF, average TPSF. So the idea now is to replace outputs of this algorithm which uses, which uses the secret key by the random variable ESIM. There will be no difference to what uh, to to previously. And what we do, we pick a salt in the list L1, we get eSIM that, that is associated to, to this salt R that we pick in L1, and we put eSIM and R. This creates a valid signature. Furthermore, we can run the attacker with only, sorry, with only the knowledge of F, which is an ATPSF. At the end, the attacker forges the signatures. As the attacker has no information on the list L1, he will create a signature for a salt that is not in L1 with a high probability. So the attacker will find a clue between the H, H of the message here, concatenated with a salt which is not in the list L1. So he finds a clue between here the random values that are output by the hash function and the function F. So, I gave here a quick sketch of the security reduction when the attacker makes classical queries to the hash function. For the quantum case, we used in the, we used in the crucial way the following proposition of Zandri. This proposi proposition states the following. Let A ROM be a quantum query algorithm running in time t and making Q queries to a ROM oracle. Let T be a distribution which is epsilon close to the uniform distribution over fixed length big vectors. Then, if we re replace quantum queries of A to the ROM by quantum queries to a function G picked according to the distribution fun T, here it means that the outputs of G are distributed like the distribution T. Then, outputs of algorithm R will be the same up to a factor which is roughly equal to the square of square root of epsilon. I'm going now to conclude. In this work, we proposed a, rela a relaxation of the gentry Picard mekunatan condition to make hash and sign signature scheme with a tight security reduction. Now we reduce to the problem claw with random function, not the collision problem. We applied this result, this security reduction to the code based signature scheme, WAVE. In this case, the claw with random function problem is known as deconing one out, one out of many problem. It is a deconing problem where we have access to many noisy code words and we only want to decode one of them. In the case of WAVE parameters, best algorithm to solve the DOOM problem have the same complexity as those solving the decoding problem, which is the problem upon which the one-way function relies. Therefore, we show in this case that forging a signature is the same as inverting the one-way function. Thank you.